call this meeting of Lima City Council to order. We'll begin tonight's meeting with the invocation by Councilor Tebbin, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Lord, please help guide us as we do the business of the city this evening and help, help us to make decisions that are in the best interest of all those we represent. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We'll have the clerk call the roll. Mr. Gordon. Here. Mr. McLean. Here. Mr. Lowe. Here. Mr. Kevin. Here. Ms. Adams. Here. Mr. Glenn. Here. Mrs. Miles. Here. And Mr. Nixon. Here. Are there any amendments to tonight's agenda? Mr. President. Mr. McLean. We need to add a few people to the privilege of the floor. A Douglas Plogger, a Bruce Talbert, and a Lonnie Hobson. And also add ordinances 20515 through 21115 for community development. Second. The motion in the second is to amend tonight's agenda under privilege of the floor by adding Douglas Plogger, Bruce Talbert, Lonnie Hobson, and adding under ordinances, ordinances 20515 through 21115. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The motion carries. Uh, privilege of the floor, Mary Fisher, regarding neighborhood concerns. Mrs. Fisher, are you here? Okay, next is Douglas Plogger. Please come forward and state your name and address for the record. Rules of counsel allow for three minutes. My name is Douglas Plogger. I live at uh, 1110 East Market Street. Um, I was involved in an incident back on June 27th by 11.30 p.m. Uh, officer Matt Boss knocked on my door and said that he backed into my truck. Well, in the process of speaking to him, um, what was it he said he was in a neighborhood chasing fireworks. So, came out, looked at the damage. He pushed my foot at least a foot and a half back into my wife's truck. Well, when I got the police report, which would be like three days later, he said that he was um, in a line of fire. He was chasing gunshots in the neighborhood. So my insurance had to pick up um, basically the whole claim. And then it came, we went to a little committee downtown here and they denied paying a deductible also. So I was just kind of figuring, you know, I should at least get my deductible back. Yeah, they kind of got off scot-free, I mean, for not being able to drive. Um, yeah, it wasn't too bad until um, yeah, we was talking on the road and he said that Two weeks prior to that, he also wrecked a uh, Dodge Charger pretty bad. I guess he pretty much totaled that thing out. So I just don't feel my responsibility is the whole claim. So just kind of looking to get the 500 hour deductible back. That's it. Okay. Uh, by way of explanation, Mr. Plogger, it's my understanding that uh, that claim will be referred to uh, a committee of counsel for consideration as a moral obligation. Mm -hmm. We will have the clerk notify you of when that meeting is set. All right. Okay? All right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next, under privilege of the floor, is Bruce Talbert. Bruce Talbert. Okay. And next is Lonnie Hobson. It's Mr. Hobson here. I see them. Okay. Uh, next is the consent calendar. Mr. President. Mr. Tevin. I move that item A of the consent calendar be received, filed, and approved, and item B be received and filed. Second. The motion and the second is to receive, file, and approve item A and to receive and file item B. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? The motion carries. Communication number one. From the Director of Community <coughs> Development regarding legislation to place tax assessments. Mr. President. Mr. Glenn. I move to communication number one, receive and file legislation on the night agenda. Second. The motion in the second is to receive and file communication number one. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The motion carries. Communication number two. From Judge Workman requesting legislation to purchase goods and services. Mr. President. Mr. Tebbin. I move the communication number two be received and filed. Legislation is on tonight's agenda. Second. second. The motion the second is to receive and file communication number two. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? 
The motion carries. <coughs> Communication number three. From the Deputy Law Director requesting legislation for amendments to Section 436.06 of the codified ordinance. Mr. President. Mrs. Miles. I move that communication number three be received and filed. Second. Could we need legislation. Yeah, could you authorize the legislation in your motion? Please? Okay, and I authorize le legislation to be done by the um, law department. Second. The motion the second is to receive and file communication number three and to authorize the law director to prepare the necessary legislation. Is there any, dis any discussion? All those in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The motion carries. Communication number four. From Chief Martin regarding liquor permits. Mr. President. Mr. Gordon. I move that communication number four be received and filed. Second. second. The motion the second is to receive and file communication number four. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The motion carries. Communication number five. From the auditor regarding disposal of surplus on govdeals.com. Mr. President. Mr. Tevin. I move that communication number five be received and filed. Second. The motion and the second is to receive and file communication number five. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The motion carries. Communication number six. From the Ohio Division of Liquor Control regarding a stock transfer to Who Bodies Inc. at 2295 North Pole Street. Mr. President. Mr. McLean. I move that communication number six be received and filed and the clerk authorized to file with no objection. Second. second. The motion on the second is to receive and file communication number six and to authorize the clerk to notify the Ohio Division of Liquor Control of no objection. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The motion carries. Communication number seven. From Chief Martin regarding legislation to transfer ownership of a vehicle to the Allen County Sheriff's Department. Mr. President. Mr. Gordon. I move that communication number seven be received and filed and legislation is on tonight's agenda. Second. second. The motion and the second is to receive and file communication number seven. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The motion carries. Communication number eight. From Chief Martin regarding legislation to enter into a contract with Dan's office furniture. Mr. President. Mr. Gordon. I move that communication number eight be received and filed in legislation on tonight's agenda. Second. second. The motion and the second is to receive and file communication number eight. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The motion carries. Communication number nine. From the Director of Community Development regarding legislation to enter into contracts for home projects. Mr. President. Mr. Glenn. I'm going to communication number nine, receive and file. Second. The motion in the second is to receive and file communication number nine. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The motion carries. Communication number 10. From the Director of Community Development regarding legislation to enter into contracts for CDBG projects. Mr. President. Mr. Glenn. I move that communication number 10 receive and file. Second. second. The motion on the second is to receive and file communication number 10. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The motion carries. Next is reports of officials. Mr. Rick Stollett regarding the summer wrap-up. Thank you, Mr. President, members of council. It's uh, great to be here. Um, you know, um, when we talk about the summer of 2015, uh, I'm, I'm harking back to a quote I read one time that said, life was too short to worry about the next rainstorm. We'd be better off to spend our resources and our efforts learning to dance in the rain. And we did a lot of that this year. We did a lot of that. So uh, we'll start with our playground program. We had a terrific, terrific uh, session this year, eight weeks, a little over 200 uh, young adults, 6 to 12, working with us um, uh, in the program. We had 17 very talented high school and college uh, leaders this year. Uh, it was a tough decision uh, to narrow it down to 17 leaders, but we, uh, we were always looking for the best of the best. We had some great kids working with our youngsters this, this summer. Um, also, our partnership with the youth uh, tennis program and LATA, 
had a, over 130 youngsters out on the tennis courts at Collett working out. Uh, our youth softball and baseball programs, we went through about 132 games. We had 76 teams um, that participating in and around uh, Lima. Our adult softball, 218 games that were, that were played with uh, over 34, 35 teams. At one time, because of the weather, we were actually 67 games behind that were rained out at one time or another. But Brett and his staff uh, did a terrific job of uh, getting those uh, games rescheduled. Some nights were double headers, some were even triple headers. And uh, we worked it out, it got done, and again, it was a, a terrific, uh, terrific opportunity for, again, young adults and some of the older, uh, over 50 league participate again this year down at Diamond Two. So good summer. Pool was a very busy place, even with the rain. We found that some days it rained in the morning, and some would come out. Uh, we get enough rain that we cancel a ball game, but uh, the pool would be able to get opened up, and we were good to go. So we were pretty busy there this summer. The Star Span was spectacular, September edition. A little difficult because most of our seasonal help was gone uh, in September. They had gone back to school, so we had to rely on our staff uh, uh, to, to make that happen without any seasonal help, which was a challenge. Our um, dance is in the park. Carolyn Dietrich over at Lincoln, another great opportunity for people to get out on Friday nights. She had a terrific lineup again this year, and we're looking forward to this coming spring. Again, we'll uh, invite Carolyn out to uh, use Lincoln Park East for uh, their dances in the park on Friday nights. The Concert in the Park series, Bart Mills, his group, uh, about 3,000, over 3,000 folks on Sunday nights throughout the summer attended those at the Pavilion. Of course, the rally in the square events that we host down here, we don't host, but our facilities are used. Then the annual toast to the city. Uh, looking at our shelter reservations, we are pretty close to what we did last year. We'll know more. We usually wrap that up here in October. Um, so we'll get those numbers, but the, we're on track to do what we did last year, maybe a little bit more, even in spite of the weather. Uh, other folks using our facilities, again, uh, an awful lot. Of course, the Y with T-ball, soccer, and flag football. Uh, the high schools, um, Lima Senior and Lima Central Catholic with baseball, tennis, and cross country. For those of you who may have had the opportunity to see uh, the county cross country meet last Tuesday over at Froat, uh, every, count, every school in the county came to Lima, and uh, we got a lot of nice reviews and uh, phone calls, uh, a couple notes there talking about just how uh, great it was to be able to come into Lima and use that facility. This coming Saturday, the 17th, Lima Senior, We'll actually be hosting the track, the Three Rivers Athletic Conference cross-country meets. We'll have teams from Toledo, Finley, and uh, the rest of the track coming to Lima again for that event this Saturday. So we're looking forward to hosting that event as well. Um, of course, the Locos and their successful season uh, as uh, league champions this year averaged about 600 folks a game. Again, these are all terrific opportunities to bring people into our community. And if we don't have the facilities to make that happen, we just become someone else on the map. So we're very, very pleased to be able to do that. While we're doing all those things, we're still charged with about 380 acres of land we have to maintain in our parks. There's an awful lot to get done. And uh, this summer, you know, with the weather, it was a challenge, but we got there. And we, uh, we couldn't pull all that together without a great staff. And our maintenance staff and our ball diamond crew, of course, our rangers, um, who do such a great job out working with the community and making sure all those things happen. So, you know, um, we also get some help from neighborhood associations, church groups, um, Eagle Scout projects will come in and want to do some things. So we're open to those things that, that can help, you know, make our parks and recreation sites a little more special for everybody. So when someone asks you, you know, how do you run an outdoor program, you know, primarily based outdoors with young kids and with recreation, all the things you do. When you get, what, Mike like, told me like 23, 24 inches of rain in about a three to four week period there at the end of June, first part of July, you, you, you do. You, you learn to dance and you've and you, and you got to be able to turn on a dime. You've got you to be able to do those things that can make, you know, those things still go on um, as best you can. What's up next for us? Um, we got uh, youth basketball signups going on right now. Um, we had last year about 70 teams involved, so we anticipate we'll be right around that number. 
as well uh, for this year. So our boys and girls basketball program signups are going on now. And uh, into the first part of November, we'll start that season in December and wrap it up in February. The uh, last item I've got um, is to announce the Halloween date, which some of you may are already know uh, the thing. But, you know, I, I do got to tell you, I think it was about eight, maybe eight or nine years ago, um, City Council, I think Mr. Tevin challenged the administration, could you get this all on one night? Could you make that happen? And uh, we went out and we worked with the townships and to, to, to the T, each one of them has agreed over these past, like I say, eight or nine years to uh, stay with us on the last Thursday of the month. And uh, uh, we're roughly six to eight. Everyone is six to eight except for Perry Township. I think Perry is going to start a half hour earlier and end a half hour earlier. So I think they're going 5.30, 7.30. But for the city of Lima, and again, you know, you know, thanks to everyone for making that happen. We're going the last Thursday of the month from 6 to 8. So this year that translates to October 29th, 6 to 8 p.m. here in the city. And again, we just want to remind folks, look out for kids that night. They're going to be running in and out of, you know, neighborhoods and yards and so forth. So please drive carefully through those neighborhoods. Um, adults, please help the kids stay together so, uh, so you can keep track of... Uh, them and if you do want to participate in this event please turn your porch light on and that helps the kids and the parents know who's participating in trick-or-treat so that's it for us for our, our wrap-up for this uh this summer going into the fall and uh we look forward to uh, getting back to you with you about how the winter activities went uh, next spring Thank that's you, all Mr. i have thank you very much mr president mr glenn yes I just have a couple things there. First of all, it was some county folks that gave you a good commitment about the work you do for our parks because they came out there and some of them never visited our park before and had an opportunity to talk to them. And also, uh, I had an opportunity to meet in a city this past weekend and was very, very happy how, how you go about and you got the smallest budget in the city, how you keep all this entertainment going in our city. And I try to be Rick Stolly and say, hey, we got some good folks that do donations and we motivate uh, companies that uh, to sponsor and you, you just get it all thought out. The same way you put together, make sure the locals had a good area with lighting. You went around and make sure them things was around, everybody signed it, and turn in the stuff with a, then to pay the money to do that. So it's a lot of good things that you do on a small budget and you make it happen. But some cities does not have all the recreation that we have in our city. So, so well, thank you. I hope I said the things right, though, because we do have some good sponsors in our city we do. That, that come well, out and help well, out. It, it truly is. It, mm -hmm. it, it truly is a team effort. And mm -hmm. none of this happens without the help of council, right. without the administration's vision to help push this, you know, these efforts forward, and uh, then giving us the resources to make it happen. So, again, uh, you know, thank you for all that you guys do to make that work. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Thank President. Mr. Stolle. Mr. President. Mr. Lowe. Yeah, I just want to tell Mr. Stolle, uh, I had the privilege of playing with Simply Smooth in the park one evening out there. And you're a ranger. I wish I knew her name, a uh, younger lady. Her professionalism was superb. And even though it was over before the sun went down, we was way out there tearing things down, 1030, almost quarter after 11 at night. And she stayed there. And I just want to say hats off to her. I wish I could, I wish I knew her name, uh, but I'll describe her afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but um, she, she was very, very, very kind lady. Terrific. So I just Thank want to you. let you I'll, know that. I'll pass that on. Uh, thank, thank you, you Mr. Stout. Um I'm going to ask council to uh, support a motion to, I guess, revise our agenda and go back to privilege of the floor. I believe that uh, Mr. Bruce Talbert has arrived. Is it, that's my motion, could I get a second? second? second. Okay, so motion the second. Uh, all those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The motion carries. Mr. Talbert, um, if you could state your name and address for the record, and our rules allow for three minutes. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank all of uh, the council for giving me this brief opportunity. My name is Bruce Talbert. I live at 1505 Leland Avenue, Lyme, Ohio. I've been advised by uh, council not to uh, make any comment 
to city council in regards to the situation that I was coming with my concerns to speak with you about. So hopefully here soon, I can come at you at a better time when it's more better for me to uh, speak with you and let you know not only my concerns, but a lot of concerns of people that I know. Uh, so with all due respect, I thank you for giving me the opportunity and I look forward to the next time that I can uh, uh, speak with you again. Very good. All right, thank thanks. you. Uh, next is ordinances, ordinance 215. Levying special assessments for property maintenance code charges on premises in the city of Lyme, Ohio. Mr. President. Mr. Glenn. I move that ordinance 215 be passed on its first reading. Second. second. The motion in the second is that ordinance 215 be <coughs> passed on its first reading. Is there any discussion? We'll have the clerk call the roll. Mr. Tebbin. Yes. Ms. Adams? Yes. Mr. Glenn? Yes. Mrs. Miles? Yes. Mr. Nixon? Yes. Mr. Gordon? Yes. Mr. McLean? Yes. And Mr. Love? Yes. Ordinance 215 has been passed on its first reading by an 8 to 0 vote. Ordinance <coughs> 20115? Authorizing payment from various Lyman Municipal Court funds for 2016. Mr. President? Mr. Tevin? I move that Ordinance 201-15 be passed on its first reading. Second. The motion in the second is to pass Ordinance 20115 on its first reading. Is there any discussion? Will the clerk call the roll? Mr. Tevin? Yes. Ms. Adams? Yes. Mr. Glenn? Yes. Mrs. Miles? Yes. Mr. Nixon? Yes. Mr. Gordon? Yes. Mr. McLean? Yes. And Mr. Lowe? Yes. Ordinance 20115 has been passed on its first reading by an 8 to 0 vote. Ordinance 20215. Authorizing the mayor to enter into a contract for the purchase of bulk fuel for 2016. Mr. President? Ms. Adams? I move that Ordinance 202-15 be passed on its first reading. Second. The motion in the second is to pass Ordinance 202-15 on its first reading. Is there any discussion? We'll have the clerk call the roll. Mr. Tevin? Yes. Ms. Adams? Yes. Mr. Glenn? Yes. Mrs. Miles? Yes. Mr. Nixon? Yes. Mr. Gordon? Yes. Mr. McLean? Yes. Mr. Lowe? Yes. Ordinance 202-15 has been passed on its first reading by an 8 to 0 vote. Ordinance 203-15. Authorizing the mayor to transfer a 2000 Ford Windstar to the Allen County Board of Commissioners for use by the Sheriff's Department. Mr. President. Mr. Gordon. I move that Ordinance 203-15 be passed on its first reading. Second. The motion in the second is to pass Ordinance 203-15 on its first reading. Is there any discussion? We'll have the clerk call the roll. Mr. Tevin? Yes. Ms. Adams? Yes. Mr. Glenn? Yes. Mrs. Miles? Yes. Mr. Nixon? Yes. Mr. Gordon? Yes. Mr. McLean? Yes. Mr. Lowe? Yes. Ordinance 203-15 has been passed on its first reading by an 8 to 0 vote. Ordinance 204-15. Authorizing the mayor to enter into a contract with Dan's office furniture. Mr. President. Mr. Gordon. I move that Ordinance 204-15 be passed on its first reading. Second. The motion in the second is to pass Ordinance 20415 on its first reading. Is there any discussion? I'll have the clerk call the roll. Mr. Tebbin? Yes. Ms. Adams? Yes. Mr. Glenn? Yes. Mrs. Miles? Yes. Mr. Nixon? Yes. Mr. Gordon? Yes. Mr. McLean? Yes. And Mr. Lowe? Yes. Ordinance 20415 has been passed on its first reading by an 8 to 0 vote. Ordinance 20515. To authorize the mayor to enter into a contract with New Lima Housing for the Future, Inc. for housing maintenance training. Mr. President. Mr. Glenn. I move that Ordinance 20515 be placed on a second reading. Second. The motion in the second is to place Ordinance 20515 on a second reading. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The motion carries. Ordinance 20615. Authorizing the mayor to enter into a contract with New Lima Housing for the Future Inc. for administrative services under the city's housing program. Mr. President. Mr. Glenn. I move to Ordinance 20615 be placed on a second reading. Second. The motion in the second is to place Ordinance 20615 on its second reading. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? <laughs> The motion carries. <coughs> Ordinance 207-15. Authorizing the mayor to enter into a contract with Lima Allen County Council on Community Affairs to provide loan closing services and down payment assistance. Mr. President. Mr. Gordon. I move that Ordinance 207-15 uh, be placed on the second reading. Second. So, 
The motion the second is to place ordinance 20715 on second reading. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The motion carries. Ordinance 208. 15. Authorizing the mayor to enter into a contract with Lyme Allen Council and Community Affairs for housing counseling services. Mr. President. Mr. Gordon. I move that ordinance 208-15 uh, be placed on its second reading. Second. The motion of the second is to place ordinance 208-15 on its second reading. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The motion carries. Ordinance 209-15. Authorizing the mayor to enter into a contract with Lima Allen Council on Community Affairs to provide fair housing services. Mr. President. Mr. Glenn. I move that Ordinance 20915 be placed on second reading. Second. The motion the second is to place Ordinance 20915 on second reading. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The motion carries. Ordinance 21015. Authorizing the mayor to enter into a contract with Road State College. Mr. President. Mr. Glenn. I move that Ordinance 21015 be placed on second reading. Second. The motion of the second is to place Ordinance 21015 on second reading. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The motion carries. Ordinance 21115. Authorizing the mayor to enter into a contract with Bradfield Community Center. Mr. President. Mr. Glenn. I move that Ordinance 21115 be placed on the second reading. Second. The motion in the second is to place Ordinance 21115 on second reading. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The motion carries. <laughs> Miscellaneous business, Mr. Tevin. Uh, just one thing this evening. Uh, I had a couple of calls concerning the lawn bags, and I had a conversation with Mike Caprella for the, uh, with the leaves starting to fall. And the city, Mike, this week, I think you said, was switching to the larger size bags with the uh, leaf cleanups beginning at People's Yards. So uh, those are available now, and uh, people can get those to, to help them with their cleanup efforts. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Tevin. Ms. Adams? Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I just have one item this evening. Uh, this Saturday, October 17th, from noon to 2 p.m., uh, Lima Police is having uh, what they call a community day, and it's being held at the New Life Assembly Church at 1003 East Kibbe Street, and um, it is to introduce the uh, COP community police officer to the community and also uh, for us to introduce ourselves to him. Uh, along with this, um, area agencies and businesses uh, are engaging in this activity, and they are um, Spheron, LACA, Crime Victim Services, the Spartan Health Clinic, Freedom Elementary School, Meat City, McDonald's, Allen County Sheriff's Office. Uh, there'll be a free lunch job services on site. Uh, you can speak with your local law enforcement, including your new community-oriented police officer. I'm very excited about this. I've been to the office there at the church. It's a separate entrance. Uh, he has hours on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Uh, normally when he would be in the office on Tuesdays, I believe it's from 9 to noon. And on Thursday, it's from one to three. I visited him on Tuesday. Obviously, I knew that time. Um, I have placed a call with him, and he uh, returned my call, which is a good sign. Uh, he's been out going door to door, one doing surveys, uh, also uh, handing out and placing these flyers. And um, Chief, is there anything I've overlooked? Okay. Very excited about it. I think the weather's going to be a little cool, but it's going to be dry. And uh, really looking forward to everyone coming out and partaking in these uh, services, opportunities, and to share fellowship. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Adams. Mr. Glenn. Yes, got a couple of things here. 
uh, first of all, I'd like to, I'd like to thank the folks that helped out uh, when we did the band of box. And I know we did a lot of work in our state, the ones that helped out in the county. And we just seen that uh, Senator Sheer Brown proposed already that we don't ban the box on uh, any felony charge on any application. So we did a lot of work on that, and and uh, it's not done yet, but the final draft will be out in a couple of weeks. So we're hoping that everybody continue buying into it, and right now, State of Ohio is buying into it right now to give everybody the opportunity to get a job and give them opportunity. That's not going to stop them from checking on you, but you got an opportunity to let let them know what's going on. Why did you get that, had that felony? But we're excited about that, and there's so many people who took part in that in Allen County, all around the state of Ohio. But, and we was so happy to see that on TV last night. Also, uh, October 24th is our hearing walk at the Martin Luther King Park. And uh, we are getting a lot of feedback on that uh, from Middletown, Ohio, Dayton, Cincinnati. Uh, a lot of folks just want to order shirts and, and donate to that. But we feel good about that. We're so happy. We also got a group coming in from uh, Solid Rock Church in Dayton. So, they want to take part in it, so and the people from Salina want to come down and take part in it. So it's kind of great that we all try to fight this war on this. And this is a heavy war. Heroin is a heavy, heavy thing on a lot of families right now. There's a lot of death that happened in this, so we have about that. We have about the sponsor who's taking part in this too. So we appreciate all that. Also, uh, we're getting some group of people together to help break some of your leaves out. So when Mr. Allen gave us the date. We won't be behind on the date this time this year. I always said that we're going to stay ahead of it because as soon as we set a date, some of the folks say, wow, we're always first all the time. But we're going to make sure we get these yards raked out uh, because some of these leaves have been getting in the, in the sewer run thing area and giving us the flooding and stuff. So we're going to make sure we got some people who want to help out with that. We got about 15, 20 volunteers, some of the older people who cannot get their yard raped. We're going to get it taken care of. Also, we want to make sure that uh, we help out the Salvation Army uh, with the South Carolina people. We're we'll working on that next week. Uh, we got a lot of kin folks, and some people got kin folks. I got some calls. They got kin folks in the South Carolina area. So we're going to try to work with the Red Cross, getting water to them, and some of the needs they're going to need there in South Carolina. So we want to show our hometown pride on that. Also, we're going to be having a meeting uh, on economic development meeting. We're going to have on the home. Wait, let me make sure. The Home Housing Department request a proposal. We're going to do this on Monday, October 19th at 530. You guys are available on that. So we're going to look over that proposal for that home Mr. development request. Mr. Glenn, make sure that you refer that. Oh, i got to refer. I forgot to it's not committee. on. Yeah. Okay. I'm referring this. I'd like to make a motion that we refer this Home Housing Department request for proposal on Monday, October 19th at 530. Sorry motion and the second is to refer the issue as described by Councilor Glenn to the Community Development Community and Economic Development Committee mm -hmm. for discussion. Is there any discussion? Was there a second on that motion? No. Second. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Motion and the second is to refer the issue to the Department of Community Development Committee. Mm -hmm. Is there any discussion on that? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The motion carries. Okay. That's Monday the 19th at 530. So we'll be here the Monday and we'll hear that project going on. Also, I'm so happy about uh, the COP station. And we need everybody to get out there to it. And the officer is getting around and trying to do surveys. And a lot of folks have to be giving good compliments, Ms. Adams, mm -hmm. about that in your area. And uh, it's great. That we got an officer getting around talking to the people and asking them what they want. So them are some of the good signs that we got going on there, and it's great, and fantastic. And that's it for me. Thank you, Mr. Glenn. This is Miles. Thank you. I also want to mention about the uh, community um, uh, oriented policing station here. I was I'm very I want to thank uh, Officer Rody and Officer, Officer Garlark for reaching out to us for input on what we would like to see mm -hmm. uh, in regards to the community oriented policing. I thought that was a, a nice gesture on their part to make sure that they're right. doing what you know what we would like to see them see them do. So uh, I appreciate their effort and in, in inviting us to come and talk with them. A very nice station, uh, nice and cozy back there, and and I look forward to him getting out in the neighborhood and. And talking with people and, and bridging that gap, you know, when it comes to relationships 
uh, with our police officers in our neighborhoods. Uh, lastly, uh, the Westgate Neighborhood Association will meet October 18th at 6.30 p.m. There will be a light meal served at 6 p.m. And then the, the speaker, which will be someone from the Lima Fire Department, will speak at 6.30. And the location is the Chamberlain Hookery Funeral Home on Cable Road. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Miles. Mr. Gordon. Thank you, Mr. President. <clears throat> First, I'd like to refer the issue of uh, Mr. Plogger's um, damaged vehicle under moral obligation to the Safety Services Committee. Second. second. Motion the second is to refer the issue of Mr. Plogger's uh, moral, moral obligation claim to the Safety Services Committee. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The motion carries. Um, and second of all, already uh, in committee, uh, in the Safety Services uh, Committee, I want to call a meeting um, to uh, an informational meeting on the, uh, for the Citizens Review Board on November 2nd at 6 p.m. and ask the clerk to notify Mr. Haynes, Judge Reed, and everybody involved with the city. Oh, you need to, you're referring that to the no committee? it's already it's already been there yeah it's in committee it's already there. Right. there's no further action you just call the meeting okay all right and i'm going to remind people to be good to each other and that'll be it <laughs> thank you mr gordon <laughs> mr mclean thank you mr president um i want to thank the people from the north side neighborhood association and the volunteers that we had we worked on a house over on Ertl. We're trying to get it prepped up and ready for uh, Make a Difference Day, which is on the 24th. So everybody keep in the back of their mind and try to get a project for your neighborhood sometime on that day because that's going to be citywide action. So um, we're still going to need some volunteers for that. We're going to do some inside painting on it. But just to give you some progress, we painted the garage, painted the garage door, uh, painted uh, all of the awnings and uh, all the window trim and uh, landscape. So, we got a lot done within a four hour with about the 15 people that we had there and we could sure use some more help. Uh, hopefully the weather is as good as it was that day on the 24th. So either contact Dave Blavel at uh, Northside Neighborhood Association or contact me at 419-234-6651. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. McLean. Mr. Lowe. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, my heart's been kind of heavy for the past couple of weeks. Um, if you see tonight, I'm wearing purple. I've got a family member who's dealing with domestic violence. And I want individuals, I, I made a plea about a month and a half ago, and they just don't know how to get out. And if you're a neighbor or you know someone that is dealing with domestic violence, you may need to be that voice for them and get them help and get involved. And, and, and there's a couple young ladies that I spoke to this past week about situations that they were in. And they looked me dead in the eye and said, he's going to kill me. And they know it, and they just don't know how to get out. And trying to get them help and seek help for them, it was, it was eye-opening. Uh, so if you're aware of a situation, please report it and, and, and do your best to, to help an individual out. And that's it, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Lowe. Um, I think everybody's pretty well covered everything I was going to talk about. So we do have an executive session this evening. Mr. Mr. President, I move that we adjourn into executive session to discuss matters of collective bargaining. Second. The motion on the second is to adjourn into executive session for the purposes of discussing collective bargaining. Is there any discussion on the motion? All those, I'm sorry, we have to have a roll call. I'll ask the clerk to call the roll. Thank you, Mr. Tevin. Yes. Ms. Adams. Yes. Mr. Glenn. Yes. Mrs. Miles. Yes. Mr. Nixon. Yes. Mr. Gordon. Yes. Mr. McLean. Yes. And Mr. Lowe. Yes. The motion carries by an 8-0 vote. We will adjourn into executive session in 10 minutes. <laughs>